Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Today we are celebrating the 12th Sunday after Trinity. We are celebrating our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Words from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. The sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in the house, ever they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are not Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they may hit a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on your shield, O Lord. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Lord than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, may your messages and preaching come to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, that our faith might not rest on articulation of words by pastors or the human of human mind, but upon your power and presence. Help us never to depend upon our own might or power but on your spirit. May you, the God of all hope, fill us with all the joy and peace as we trust in you and in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus, Messiah of all people. In his name we pray. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the letter to the Ephesians in chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, 
Put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted in the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and keep always on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me that so that I will be fearless as make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I'm an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearless as I should. The word of God, the word of life. Amen. The gospel for the twelfth Sunday of the Trinity is taken from the gospel of John in chapter 6. Jesus speaks, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so that the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this, while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. On hearing it, many of the disciples said, this is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about it, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the son of man ascend to where he was before? The spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and of life. Yet, there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. And he went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, Once more we have a passage from the letter to the Ephesians. Remember, Paul is imprisoned and is writing to the congregation to Ephesus to encourage and strengthen their faith. The passage today belongs to the closing chapter and encourages the congregation to stand strong in faith. Stand strong, Paul writes them. But this strength is not a strength out of nowhere, but it is a strength that is given by God to the one who stays in his presence and depends on him. It is a strength that comes when you, when you don't know how to handle things on your own, all you can do is to say, Lord, you have to be in control of this. Most of the time we try to be in control and we try to push through our own plans and ways. But we all know, sometimes things just don't work that way. Sometimes situations arise we can't handle ourselves or we cannot direct ourselves anymore. That is when we need to cry out, Lord, be in control. Lord, you're the only one to handle this. And often enough we are surprised that God and how God brings things to a good end. How he brings things together so that they can work out. Maybe different than what we had planned. Maybe different than what we have thought. But most of the time for the good or even for the better. Be strong, Paul continues his appeal with the promise. Be strong. Paul continues his appeal with the promise. God wants you to be strong. He doesn't want you to let drown. He's there to strengthen you, and because of this strength, you can handle the things that get in your way. The things that Paul calls evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, mighty powers of this dark world. It has become strange for us to think so clearly and personally of the evil. Evil has become something less touchable. But in Paul's view and in Paul's time, the evil is personalized, has shape. Another word for devil is Satan. Actually, this is a Hebrew word for devil. The word Satan in Hebrew means the one opposed, the adversary, the adversary against God and man. In the Old Testament, the use is not fixed of what we think of when we hear Satan but can just mean somebody who is against you, who attacks and fights against you, your enemy. But rather than focusing on the personality of the devil, of Satan, we should focus on what God has given us. Paul speaks of the walk in faith, of the life in faith as a battle. In other letters he describes it more as a competition in which you have to run in a way so that you win and reach the finish line. Here in the letter of the Ephesians, it is more an open battle. But if you look at the weapons, they are mostly defensive and protective. They are not aggressive weapons. They help us to stand firm, to resist the attacks and stand our ground. We will not be destroyed or killed, rather we will survive and be safe. The first armor part is a belt, the belt of truth. We need this belt because we live in a world and in an environment that still tells us too many lies. We need to hear and to embrace the truth that God tells us that we are his beloved children. We need the truth that tells us loud and strong that we do not have to prove that we are worth something, that we do not have to be something relevant, spectacular or powerful to earn the love we desire. We need the truth that tells us that we are the ones to whom God speaks. On you my favor rests. I have molded you and knitted you together in your mother's womb. That he is the one that cares and provides. That because of Christ Jesus there is nothing that can separate us from God. This is a different truth than the so-called truth that is told to us by the world around us, by the inner voices and sometimes dark powers. 
the truth of being loved by God, being worthy in his eyes, has its place in our hearts. There it is protected with the body armor of righteousness. This body armor we need to defend our heart against the voices telling us that we are not worth anything, that we are worthless and unimportant. The body armor we have to put on is the fact that God has sent us his Son Jesus Christ for our redemption, to make us right with God and in God's eyes. I like the quote that God looks at us as if we are already the way he would like us to be. He looks at us from the future. He already knows how and who we are to be in relation to him and to others. And that is why we also need shoes of peace that come from the good news. You know these voices telling you you can't tell others about God and the good news of Jesus, telling you that it is worthless and a hopeless task, too big as well, that the negative dis responses are too hard to handle. But peace coming from the good news gives the security and the strength to continue to share faith. It is a peace that will shine out to others, that will make it possible to build relationships, relationships that are founded in faith, founded on the truth that Christ came for us. The shield of faith and the helmet of salvation are tools to protect us from attacks of doubt and despair. They protect our minds and souls, and with that, the saving work God has started in us. We are to hold up the bond and the covenant God has created with us in our baptism through Jesus Christ. This is what we are to hold up, the sword of the word of God. Note, this is the only offensive weapon, but it is a powerful one. As much as we are called to put on protective gear, we also need something to fight back. God gives us his word. But now, how to put on the gear? Paul gives a clear advice. Pray. He says, pray at all times and on every occasion. How to do this? We can develop a habit that quick, brief prayers come from a response in every situation we meet throughout the day. We are called to make prayer our life and life our prayer. We can put on the gear by reading and thinking about God's will and God's word and his teaching for our lives through daily devotion, through contact with other Christians, through reading or listening to the Bible. With all this, we do not only strengthen ourselves and strengthen our protective gear, but we also strengthen our ability to use the word of God in a good and healthy way. Paul finishes the passage with two appeals. Pray for your brothers and sisters and pray for me. First of all, praying for our brothers and sisters reminds us we do not fight alone. We are in the battle together with others. And that means we can support and help each other. No one has to battle alone. Rather, we are called to stand together and pray as a band that ties us together. This band connects us when others run out of energy and feel lost on the way. We can help each other. Comrades in a battle used to carry each other if one gets wounded and can't move. That is what we are called to do. Imagine someone you know comes into a situation of despair and the pain is bigger than any hope and any faith. Then we are called as brothers to and sisters to be there, to carry. And sometimes the prayer is the one and only way that we can carry our comrades, because we can't change the situation, nor can we cure the pain and despair. Prayer then is a band that ties us together, keeps us connected. To be alert in our prayers for others Make sure that nobody gets lost or left behind. That is why Paul asks for prayer for his work and his situation. He doesn't do anything else than saying, 
put into practice what I just taught you. Pray for me. Pray that I do and say the right things at the right time. A good prayer for all of us, for each other, to do and to say the things, the right things, at the right time, and to proclaim the good news, which is, God is with us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, may we revere and serve you, forsaking all other would-be gods. Loving God, you hear our prayers, you live among us. Holy God, one God, you are so powerful that the highest heaven cannot contain you. Neither can churches, our hearts, or our world hold you fast. Nevertheless, you hear our prayers and pleas on this day, for your love is far greater than our needs. Holy Spirit, come to the brokenhearted amongst us with your promise of redemption and resurrection, for we believe that we shall live forever in the house of the Lord. Arm us with your might, Lord God, else we will be defeated by evil. May your truth, peace, faith, and holy word guard us, inspire us, embolden us to be your people. Lord Christ, help us to take no offense from your difficult teachings. You're the Holy One of God, and the Heavenly Father bids us to come to you in faith. Lord God Almighty, this word delights in, produ in producing weapons of war. Forgive our fear of one another. Teach us to trust your Son and bring peace to the hearts of all your people. Among us, many are counting on your goodness and mercy for hope and healing. Hear us as we name them in our hearts before you. Lord God, you hear our prayers. Listen to us as we join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.